and welcome to my channel Kim Everhard Art. Uh, my name is Kimberly and today I have for you a watercolor painting time lapse. Um, I actually recorded this at about um, 10 times speed and then I sped it up twice in um, when I was editing it so it's about 20 times the actual painting time. Um, the video is just a bit too long when I had it just at the speed that I'd recorded it. It's kind of hard for me sometimes to figure out what I want to record at. I try to get a good speed so that you can see what I'm doing but you don't have to sit there through the entire painting which often takes me several hours over several days or weeks. If you're new here, I'm so glad that you're here and I am excited to share this painting with you. It is a pleasure to be able to have you here and um, to show you what I'm working on today. I do want to briefly mention that in the description box below, you'll find links to my website and a website called Kit. And that's where I link the products that I use for my paintings. It's a good resource if you are also a watercolor painter, especially if you're a beginner. Um, you can check out the paintbrushes and paints and papers that I use for all of my paintings. And then my website is also right there. It's just kimeverhardart.com and I have art prints, original paintings, stickers, lots of fun things that you can buy there to support me. I very much appreciate any support that you give through either of those sites. And now I want to move into the story of this painting as well as some info about my process with this painting and I may intersperse or um, entangle those things together a little bit. The background of this painting is that I was in Colorado last year in 2020. Um, we were blessed to be able to still go on this trip even um, with the pandemic. We went out to Colorado and spent some time in, time in the wilderness, um, just away from everything. And it was so good just to um, be out breathing the fresh air. Um, it was just a really, I mean, there were not a lot of people out on this trail and the people who were there were mostly through hiking. So this was the Colorado Trail, which is a very long trail in Colorado. I believe it is it's several hundred miles. I'm not sure exactly how many. We only did 43 of those miles. Um, I'm pretty sure that's like 10% of the trail. I think it might be 400 some miles. So, but that's about our speed. That's about our, um, that's about the length of trip that I usually keep it under. Sometimes um, we do, well, most of the time we do shorter trips. Um, so that was the longest trip I had ever done. It was very challenging, very exciting. And I, I really learned a lot. I learned a lot about my limits and about being out in nature for multiple days and the, all of the things and challenges that arise from that and ways to overcome them. And, and it was really cool. Um, if you guys would ever like to hear like full stories about, um, my backpacking trips, let me know. I I've never really done videos like that, but I might like to, um, you know, they're just small adventures, but I, you know, they're pretty cool. So <laughs> let me know if you'd like to hear about that someday, like a full dedicated video to a backpacking trip or something like that. Anyways, so we were on the Colorado trail. Uh, we did four or five days there. Um, it was really amazing adventure, very challenging. I took lots of pictures along the way because I knew that I wanted to capture the things I'd seen there uh, for myself to remember and also to share with others because one of the main reasons that I paint is I feel strongly that I want to 
share my experiences in nature. I want to um, encourage other people to spend time outdoors. And so my landscape paintings are my way of doing that, of sharing just the beautiful um, landscapes and the peace and calmness that you can find outdoors. I find that all to be very inspiring and I am really am passionate about sharing those things with, um, with you. So I'm glad you're here to hear about it. So I had all these pictures from the trail and I already have several paintings that I've done from Colorado and um, this one I was just it's been over a year since we went there but I was just going through my pictures again and I saw this painting or sorry <laughs> this picture it wasn't a painting yet um, and it was of this spot that was at the end of a very difficult section of trail it was um, I think it was the second day and there were four of us there two of them were doing okay my husband pretty much had a little bit of altitude sickness and I was also having a little bit of a hard time with the altitude and the first thing we did that day was go what felt like straight up a very long hill and it was an old logging road I had to pause for a second there my cat was uh, trying to crawl into my lap and mess up my mic anyways it was an old logging road and it was just it was very difficult but it was also really rewarding when we got to the top and we were like wow we just climbed like however many feet and that was a, a big um, big step forward along the trail along the process of accomplishing this goal and at the top I took a picture of this spot in the woods that was just it just looked magical it was like a fairy tale woods that you would see in a like children's book um, there was just really bright green moss and really tall trees that were like really golden colors and the light was shining down through the trees and making these really cool spots on the ground that um, really drew me in and I just like stood there for a couple minutes enjoying the view <laughs> and resting and taking in my breath as I had just climbed this tall hill and um, I just wanted to capture that um, that feeling and remember that feeling of accomplishment and of just exhaustion but like a good kind um, where I had just done this really hard thing and I felt rewarded by this super super pretty view this really amazing woods out in Colorado I wanted to share that uh, with other people and I guess looking a little deeper I wanted to share that oftentimes when you're in a hard situation you don't see the reward until the end and even if it was it maybe it was there all along maybe you were building it you were building up a strength in yourself or um, making a situation better along the way even though it was difficult um, like this trail because it was really pretty the whole time we were walking up this trail but I was not focused on that I was focused on one foot in front of the other I was staring at the ground lifting one foot just making sure I wasn't stumbling looking at what I needed to and then but it was just it was beautiful everywhere around us it was morning light shining through the trees my favorite kind of light and then we got to the top I realized I didn't have to climb anymore and I looked around me and I was just astounded by the beauty around me and wondering how did I get here but it was just one step in front of another and um, and you know you got there so 
maybe that's looking a little deeply into the situation, but I like to do that. Now that I have gotten through all of that fun story sentimental talk, I'm just going to go over briefly, simply, some of the techniques that I use in this painting and maybe I might mention a couple of the materials that I use. So with this painting, it was challenging because of the light. It was a little bit strange because there was very different tones spread throughout the painting. There was bright colors in the front, in the middle ground, and the background was also really bright because the sun was shining on the other side of some of the trees. So it was, I had to figure out how to still make it look like it had depth and it had the right feeling to it, even with that, you know, dappled light. And this was, you know, not something I'd really done a lot of. Would like picture like um, a landscape where it just looks straight into the woods like this. So you know, I'm learning as I go, as I always do. I'm so sorry if you hear a squeakiness. That is just me not being able to sit still in my chair. <laughs> so I started. Obviously, you can see what I've done here, but I made sure to start with the background of the painting because I knew it was going to be very light and then I could build on top of that the trees that were farther forward and then I moved on to the foreground and I tried to keep that background very simple and I think I did a pretty good job with that. Um, maybe it could have even been a little bit more simple, less different colors back there, but um, yeah, the goal was to keep the background very simple so that the front would really stand out and your eye would be drawn to the right place. And after I did the background, when I was working on the trees, I used some newer techniques to me. I used some dry brushing um, with the texture of the bark dry brushing really brought out the texture of the paper so that it doesn't sit into all the crevices of the paper. I was able to use a brush with um, stiffer bristles and get paint on it that was relatively dry. It was not super wet, it didn't have a lot of water in it, and just kind of roughly brush it along the surface to pull out some texture, especially in that, um, that back tree that is a darker brown. I used it on that one as well as pretty much all the other trees that are more detailed. I also used that dry brush technique on the ground to get some more texture on there and then I also used um, some liquid frisket block out stuff kind of splot splattered on the ground um, to also bring out some light spots there. Um, I used that block out also on some tree branches that were brighter so that I could keep that lightness on the branches and not have to paint around them because that would be ridiculous. The brushes that I'm using in this painting are Princeton. I have a quill brush that I use for the larger parts and I have a couple of rounds as well. I typically use a size six round, I believe, for most things. And then I also think I have like a size two or four round as well. The quill is a size four that I use mainly. And these are the Princeton Neptune series, and those are linked in my kit page in the description box. The paper that I use is almost always going to be Arches. I've used some other brands and have not been happy with them. I found Arches and I have not gone back. Um, this palette I really love working from. It's a metal tin palette and then it has half pan watercolors 
um, inside of it and so I just get it empty with the pans empty and then I fill them with my watercolors and I use several different brands um, some of my favorite watercolor brands are Winsor & Newton as well as Daniel Smith and I really like some colors from M. Graham I might need to get some more M. Graham paints because I always love them I only have a few but I really like them when I use them I always paint with a paper towel nearby so I can get off any excess water or paint that I need to. This tree, more in the foreground, the biggest one, was um, was interesting to paint because it did have the light shining on it, so the lower part is a lot brighter, and then there were some other spots also that were brighter. So it was definitely interesting to try to show that it was the light shining down on it and shadows and lightness that made those color tones rather than a different color in the bark. I used cooler tones um, in the shadows and then warmer ones where it was brighter. I think that's all that I have to say about the process of the painting. If you have any questions, I would love to answer them. Just let, um, you know, post them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And I'll just let you listen to the rest with some fun music.
Well, everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you really enjoyed watching the process of me painting this landscape. It is called The End of the Logging Road, and it is available on my website as either the original painting or a really high quality print. I make all my prints myself. And you can find both of those things on my website, kimeverhardart.com. I'll have that up on the screen here somewhere. And also it is in the description box below. I'm so happy that you joined me today. I hope that you have a wonderful day and that you get to spend some time outside in nature, get some sunshine, feel the fresh air. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.